Hello, my name's Dan. I'm the product marketing manager here at Slug Disco. And in today's video, we're going to be talking to Tom, the developer on Ecosystem. Ecosystem, for those who don't know, is a marine simulation where you can grow and modify an underwater ecosystem with natural selection creating the life forms that inhabit it. So what are we going to be talking about? Well, the next update to Ecosystem is going to be introducing some new fish heads which will help make your creations a lot more visually diverse. We're not quite ready to show off the new heads just yet as they're still in production. So Tom's gonna to be using the live version of the game to just demo the sort of system and explain how these heads and skins all kind of work within the procedural fish that are made in the game. So with that said, let's just jump straight over to our chat with Tom. Uh, so the uh, the next major uh, update for ecosystem will actually be adding uh, a lot of new heads and skins uh, to the game. Uh, right now, I think we have something like nine, uh, but we're hoping, so the, the first batch that we're working on now will add four more, um, but for the update, I, I would like to get that to like another eight or nine possibly, to, so, to, so to almost double the amount of heads that are available right now. Um, yeah. and this is so something to... I know players have been sort of asking for to just a bit more customization, um, just yeah. so the fish look different. Uh, you know, there's yeah. just a little bit more differentiation between them. Yeah, because you can get a lot of different bodies, right? But then uh, with the heads, of course, you, you're stuck with the, with the 10 because those aren't uh, procedurally generated. They're sort of grafted on. Um, and so, yeah, my, my hope is that, that getting another 10 and then possibly in, in future updates even more than that um, should should help a lot with that. Um, and and so in order to uh, to sort of get, um, we, we sort of asked, you know, in the Discord uh, for suggestions what people wanted to see. Um, and of course, with heads, there's sort of like a balancing act, you know, because you want things that are distinct and kind of interesting, but you don't want anything that's like so distinct that you 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 notice it so much. Like you don't want a feature that stands out so much that every single time it looks like it's the same fish that you're seeing, you know, in yeah. a sense. Um, and so the uh, the first group that we got, uh, I, I sort of tried to pick also looking at uh, there. There were a lot of good suggestions, and I even like learned about some some interesting fish that I wasn't even familiar with uh, myself. Um, Always but, so I tried to experience. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, but we sort of, I, I tried to pick a, sort of like a group that would also kind of help to round out uh, things that we don't have uh, already or to sort of fit like niches uh, that, that I feel like we were sort of missing before. Um, and so uh, what, we're, what we'll be adding first will be uh, so a head based on the lead sickness, which, uh, which is like a, one of the, the largest fish that's ever existed. Um, they're from the Jurassic era, I believe, and they're, uh, they're huge uh, filter feeders. Um, and, uh, you know, we sort of don't have a good uh, filter feeder base head before something with, uh, you know, that, that has a teeth. That, that, that just uh, you know can swim through. There, there yeah. are creatures like that in the game, but there's not a head based on a species that that does that. Um, and so that's the first. They're a, a Jurassic era filter feeder, um, and uh, they're they're an interesting species. They're they're because because there's a little bit of, um, uh, so we don't know a hundred percent what they what they looked like because um, their skeletons were not completely made of bone. There was a lot of cartilage. Um, mm. Even in the front of their of their uh, skull, basically, so there, there's an element of guesswork done to like knowing what they look like. Yeah. Um, but but so that's the that's the first uh, species, uh, and then the second actually is just uh, based on a on an eel, um, because we don't really have a good solid sort of like more a eel looking uh, uh, head already. Um, even though in fact uh, before the evolutionary algorithm existed um and eel was actually the first thing that i made in the game just to test oh, right, if okay. the if the basic systems would work you know so like an eel kind of swims by making like a a sine wave go down it you know it, it has yeah. a traveling wave and it can and it goes forward in that way um and and that was sort of like the easiest way to test if you know if i if i, I just made a brain by hand you know and made a body by hand and and tried to see if it could actually swim um and so, yeah, an eel would be next, and then in addition to that would be a, a parrotfish. Uh, they live in a couple different places, like around coral reefs and rocky coasts and things like that. Uh, and they have an interesting sort of, like, a, it, it, it almost looks like a beak. Uh, they use it to eat, um, they eat, like, algae off of coral and rocks and things like that. So they have a very interesting and kind of distinctive um, face. 
um, and and uh, it, it also kind of fills a niche that we we don't have mm. yet. Uh, and lastly, it would just be a plesiosaur, um, because somehow it's it's something that you always kind of want to make, and and people have made plesiosaurs. Uh, you can see them in the editor uh, or or online on Steam. There's lots of of plesiosaurs, uh, and I think it'll be good to have sort of like a you know an apex predator, a very proper another huge apex predator uh, species. Um, they're also quite interesting, like evolutionarily, right? Because a, a plesiosaur um, was a species that uh, walked on land, you know, originally, and then uh, oh, right, over time okay. went went back into the ocean, and their limbs became uh, flippers, you know. And uh... <laughs> that raises a question that I've I haven't considered before with uh, ecosystems. So when you know the procedural generation, like the algorithms, like work in its magic and making the creatures. Does it pick, can, can any head be an outcome? Can he, any head be chosen? Or do certain heads have, like, uh, I don't know, attributes attached to them that if it looks like it's going to be an apex predator, it'll it'll pick from the predator heads? Um, is, that yeah. a, is that a feature of the algorithm, or can it kind of be any head for it, anybody? It uh, it does, if it, if it um, for, for predators and apex predators, it does tend to prefer um using heads that look like predator and apex predator heads which um which are actually let me see i can probably find them this one is a is a, a predator head with with the teeth and then it also tends to like uh let's see this one will, will be the other those are sort of the two main like predator heads that you get so yeah. it it definitely would add something to get a few more there um the way the system kind of works in general <laughs> it has a few other constraints that it needs to match. Um, and so, like, as you can kind of see in the editor, the the bodies are like a bunch of boxes uh, that are all kind of joined together, right? Like when uh, this this randomize button that you see in the editor is, is actually the same one that is used when you spawn in a, a species, you know, when you get a bunch of random ones starting. Mm. Um, so so it, it starts actually with these sort of boxes that are joined together. Um, and then when it comes time to render them, the game sort of tries to work out what a reasonable skeletal system would be uh, for that chain of boxes. So like basically, it sort of tries to break it down into a set of like reasonable three D curves that would fit the basic body shape uh, without there being like too many sharp twists, you know, or or, or having it get a, a body that looks wrong, you know, broken somehow. Yeah. Um, and and then so and then basically it 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 has this body shape and it uh, it looks from the the bank of possible heads to try to find one that sort of fits it. So um, the heads have they they can be stretched and skewed uh, to some degree, um, but of course like the, you, and you can see this in the editor because it'll let you use any head you want. Like this <laughs> this head that's actually meant to be used with a with a ray doesn't look very good if you if you give it sort of like a long thin uh, creature style. Um, but but this one sort of fits better. So those are those are the main constraints on on the heads are basically just uh, um, uh, the food source essentially, and then the uh, shape of the body that the head is being connected to. Yeah. Um, um, and so uh, and and so in addition to the heads, uh, the 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 um, we're also going to be adding some new skins to those uh, to the. Uh, species that can evolve, um, and so uh, those are the those work in uh, in kind of a similar way. So they're also procedural, just like the bodies are, um, and the skins are sort of made up of materials that are broken up into like three main sections: one for the head, one for the torso, and one for the fin. And then, like within those sections, there are like different areas to ensure that it's possible to sort of like tile. Uh, the materials in places where the body is like elongated, mm. but that also it's it's still possible to kind of blend where necessary. Uh, you know, so like if I change the see the species might not have it, um, but like if I go to say this one, there's like a slightly different head color. If I change that to you know something like red. Uh, we want to have a nice sort of blend there, um, but I but I also need to be able to make this creature as as long as possible, you know, yeah. and not have it 
you can kind of see a bit a bit of a repetition there although although this is an ex incredibly long uh, body part that that probably wouldn't happen in nature too much because this is kind of a, a clunky uh, a clunky creature <laughs> yeah you can kind of see as it gets that uh, sort of longer you can start to see the tile in but at smaller scales like that yeah you can't really not really tell. yeah um and so the material the materials are uh, procedural uh, with a bunch of exposed parameters that are encoded in the DNA so that they can evolve too. Um, and the creature vision does take skin color into effect, like compared to the surrounding environment. Um, so basically, like when, when a species is looking down at a creature, it, it compares like this color on the top to the, the ground that it's looking at. And, and that does apply as well if it's like around foliage, if it's around plants and stuff, then it can blend into the plants. Mm. Um, and, it, and if there's just dirt or just rock, then it, it would need to blend into the rock. Um, and similarly, if you're looking up, uh, then it, it compares it to the, the water background. Um, so, so you can have that kind of common, uh, you, know, you know, there's a common coloration for, for fish species that they're lighter on the belly, you know, to, uh, to sort of mimic so that you can, you can come down on something and not be obvious. Yeah, because yeah, camouflage is kind of one of the kind of the things that's taken into consideration for the survival of species, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, very much so. Um, and, and also it works similarly uh, in, in, uh, when it comes to mating. Um, you, you, you may actually want to be a, a brighter, you know, more standing out kind of creature. So you can have that kind of phenomenon like the, the birds of paradise where, you know, if, there, if there's not a lot of predators around, then, uh, then it's good to be very colorful and bright and be, you know, the, the most obvious, uh, uh, the most obvious uh, member of your species. But once, once uh, something shows up that wants to eat you, it's, it's better to look <laughs> very similar to the, the dirt or the, the rocks or the grass. Is that replicated in ecosystem? The kind of the brighter colors, are they more desirable when kind of the mating's taking place in the game? So uh, somewhat, although not really strongly. Um, so it, it makes you stand out, and that does matter to the creatures just when they're when they're looking for mates. Um, like uh, th they'll be able to see a very bright, uh, shockingly colored creature from much further away than they could see one that blends in with the ground. Yeah. Um, but they don't have like they they don't yet have uh, sort of specific like mating preferences. Like they they don't uh, they don't necessarily like things yet uh, beyond sort of things that are more like direct measures of evolutionary success, like how much food they've managed to eat and and yeah. how fast they can swim and things like that. Um, but that is something that I've I've always kind of been interested in um, in modeling, and there is kind of like a simple there's kind of like a simple almost like a, a I mean writing the system to do that was almost like designing like a, a dating app or or something like that to try <laughs> yeah. to, to when the, the the when the fish they have a list of other fish that they know about you know and uh, and they're trying to to pair off in in different ways. Um, so in the background they'll be swiping right or left. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So there, there is kind of like the beginning of a of a system like that um, that that could um, could possibly be added uh, later on um, uh, uh, without too much without too much trouble. And so the uh, yeah, so the, the heads in general, I probably should have said this first, but are, are you know they're they're pre made meshes, um, and uh, and um, so so that's something that I've I've worked with artists to do. Um, and uh, I, I'm not really a, a, that much of an artist my, myself. So um, usually I, I've, uh, I found someone that I'm working with that sort of makes a head for me. Um, and then we import those into the game. We add in the materials uh, that, that sort of match the fins and the heads and the bodies. Um, and then once, once they're finished, I can add them in and, and they can be changed just like, like so, basically. Yeah, I, that's because players have been asking for this, obviously, for a bit for a while. But I, that's probably worth pointing out that, as you've been explaining, this is quite a complex system. So it's not it's not just as easy as finding a three D artist who can make a few fish heads. The it's a very specific set of skills that have to combine with being a three D artist to make specific like these assets specifically. So it took us a while to find someone. Um, because the person that did the original heads, that they weren't available anymore, so it took us a while to find someone um, to fill yeah. that kind of niche. 
yeah the the original artist uh, uh in the time since because it, it uh when i those first the first group of heads i think were about two years ago or so um and he's he's now working at a, a studio full-time uh, a full-time studio um but yeah so so adding in the the heads you know there's there's a lot of sort of constraints about like how it gets um how it gets detached um to to make sure that it, it matches up in a reasonable way and that there's not like you know pinching at the wrong places and things like mm. that um and, and to make sure that the normals work and that all the materials align and then on top of that since these these procedural materials are kind of expensive to do um and you can see that in the editor that when you when you change them uh it, the, the game needs to kind of think about it for a little while right and, and even when you sort of like just drag things it, it it's not necessarily immediate so there's a whole system that works in the background that has to kind of put these things on a on a queue and builds the new material in the background and then kind of sends it over to the fish when it once it's ready yeah. um and a, a lot of times uh and so so a lot of times it'll even be like uh the the mutation happens and then uh basically the kid gets it not not the original um so 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 it'll be pushed back um sometimes mm. so like for every head that we're adding are we adding a new skin uh, so, so usually what we've tried to do in the past is, um, so, so you can kind of tell, like when you look at the editor, there's kind of like two groups basically, uh, of, of heads. So like, if we look at this, this species, for example, um, I'll let that finish. So like when I, when I drag these heads from like, so with like one, two, three, or they all kind of use the same basic skin, although they have sort of like subtypes here also. Like so, mm. there's there's sort of like three types for this specific type of uh, of head. But once you drag it past four, there's like a new, almost like a totally new skin that goes with them, okay. and, and it'll be similar for the new ones that get that get added. Uh, basically, so they'll have kind of like a new. There'll be a new group of heads and then a new skin to go with them, possibly with like several subtypes. Yeah. of it um and and it'll work similar to to like these where like there's kind of like a you can tell there's kind of like different patterns on these different types so like this one has this this sort of uh rougher skin at the top um but if we drag this over to like skin type two we have like a different sort of look with uh with uh with spots that might pop out in a minute i'm hoping maybe that's a detail texture yeah there we go uh, yeah because while you're flicking here. through that we can kind of see before the you know like there for example the you can you can see the scene where the head like while it's updating and you, know, you had a green yeah. body and a blue um head so that kind of visualizes how the head is stuck to the, to that box it's like a yeah stationary thing that's stuck to the box. yeah and if, if i'd had one with a with a fin you might even see a three-step procedure where where first the body goes and then the the fin texture goes and then uh and then finally the head which is which is usually the most complicated uh, material because it has eyes and and things like yeah. that um so the the next update should be a big batch of heads hopefully you know almost doubling the amount that we have in the game right now um and it should be out quite soon um i i think uh so once i once all the heads come in from the artist it should be not too bad for me, for me to integrate into the game code wise um and so so ideally that would be in uh you know, like I said, I, I don't want to shoot myself in the foot by by giving a specific date, um, yeah, but it, as, it won't uh, be a long wait. I'll as just say, publisher, marketer, I'm going to jump in and be like, no, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no promises. <laughs> uh, it'll be done when it's ready. Trademark. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, we're 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 hoping it's not going to be too far off. Um, yeah, I anticipate that it should be should be quite fast. I think. Okay, so there we have it. I hope you'll agree that was quite an interesting uh, talk. I just want to thank Tom for doing that. Going forward, every couple of months, we're going to be doing these kind of video updates to supplement our written updates over on Steam. If you want to check out Incosystem, there is a link below to the store page where the game is available to buy in early access. And there is also a free demo as well if you want to try before you buy. But in the meantime, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!